Hi everyone, this is Igor from HDHat.com. The new Resolve version 15, which incorporates Fusion, now has access to Fusion's Grid Warp tool. And this tool can be very useful for all kinds of picture fixes, uh, beauty work, things of that nature. I will show you an example on the shot of this really cute dog. Click on the Fusion button. The clip that we just sent into Fusion is represented by this node on the left. That's media in number one and the media out one on the right is the node representing what goes out back to the resolve timeline. Before we start working on the dog I will demonstrate really quickly the basic principle behind the grid warp. We'll click here to add a background and add a rectangle mask to the background. With the background selected press 2 on the keyboard to send it to the viewer. You can see the rectangle is making a little rectangle cutout let's make that a different color so we can see it a little better with the background selected I will right click go to insert tools warp grid warp either pressing 2 or dragging and dropping grid warp into the viewer will accomplish the same we're seeing the output of the grid warp inside the viewer over to the right in the inspector, I'm going to change the magnet type to selected to move individual points. So the basic principle is very, very simple. We have a source and the destination grid. And when we move any of the points on the grid, uh, whether they belong to the source or the destination, that will cause the stretching just like that. So we're moving a destination. If I switch back to source, you will see that the source still looks the same. So basically we're warping from this shape to that shape of the grid. Let's multiple select these three nodes and hit delete key on the keyboard to delete them. I will select our media in one. Let's drag and drop it into the viewer on the left so we see our original unaltered image. And with that node selected I will press control space on the keyboard and type in grid. Select the grid warp and we'll drag that to the viewer on the right. We'll give ourselves a little more room up there. So I will switch to the source grid, make it a little smaller. And rotate it. We'll work on the mouth. I'm going to make that smile a little bigger. Let's size it down some more. We'll switch the magnet type to select it, even though I'm not going to be selecting the individual points just yet. Let's click and drag to select all the points on the grid and then pick any of them and move it over the mouth, just like that. Holding the mouse middle button and dragging, I can zoom in. Now, if I switch to the de destination, you will see a big warp because what is going on is the change that I made on the source side is now being warped into the destination side. This cutout of the dog's face is blown up to full frame right here. But if I click on copy source to destination and switch back and forth, and now you see we're not really changing anything. We just move the grid in place. So we added a little bit of a curled smile to the dog. If I push play, we'll see the dog doesn't really move much, so we don't have to track or animate this grid. But where's the rest of the dog? If you click on the render tab, turn off black background, and there's the rest of our dog. At any time you can assess your work by simply selecting the original source and sending it to this viewer. So I'm selecting media in one, pressing two, selecting media out, which is our final node, pressing two. So see before and after. Okay, so we have the mouth. How about we make this eye a little bigger, which will actually force me to track, and you'll see how to track a grid. Great, I will click anywhere on our nodes graph, press control space, type in grid. Grid is, that's the last tool that I use, so it's there. Press enter. 
So I've just added an, another grid warp and I'm going to connect the output of media in one node to the grid warp 2 drag it into our viewer and we'll repeat some of the similar steps that we've done on the mouth. I will select the source side size down the grid uh, to make it a little bigger than the eye switch magnet type to selected drag over all the grid points rotate it the rotation is really not necessary but just allows me to use the shape of the grid a little better since the dog's movement is more apparent in this eye region I will have to track the grid to the face I will deselect it then over at the inspector panel I will right click on the center select modify with tracker position we'll drag this tracker over a feature that's trackable uh, eye is not a good choice because I think the dog blinks but we'll try to track the corner of the eye right here We'll position the tracker and go to the modifiers tab double click the track and track forward okay now of course the tracker has moved the grid but we can easily put it back in place using the offsets and in this case no high precision is necessary we want to make sure that the area that we, that we want to distort is roughly in the middle of the grid like that we'll go back to the tools tab because our destination now is unchanged from the default position we have to click on copy source to destination there it is a source now matches the destination to see the context I will turn off the black background we'll zoom in a little more and working on the destination tab I will select the region tool change the magnet distance to a smaller number so I get a smaller diameter circle something like this is good and now we're going to enlarge the eye but we want to avoid touching anything in this outer region because we don't want to be pushing pixels against the edge as that may distort the borders of this patch and make it apparent that some work has been done on it so I will start maybe here and uh, work around the eye actually at this point I'm going to switch to selected to be able to move one point at a time we can look at the source versus the destination let's press play and see what this looks like okay it's a little angular some places but uh, we can fix some of that alright let's keep that first grid warp if I press 2 send it into the viewer that contains the mouth warp the second grid warp has the eye but we have to combine the two and we can do that with a merge node now remember the render black background setting we'll turn it off now on the layer that we'll use as the top layer in the merge I'll select the grid warp 2 that's the eye and we have the merge right here now we'll connect the output of grid warp into this merge and send the merge by pressing 2 onto the viewer and now we have both warps combined into one now I will connect the output of the merge to the media out node this is the dog before and the dog after and if we step out to the edit page we have it right there it probably will not play back in real time right away but you can turn the render cache on by selecting smart and just give it a second and the rendered frames will populate the timeline thanks for watching I hope you uh, found this tutorial useful it should give us a good idea of some of the nice new features in uh, Resolve 15